formula for the rate of change is if you sign values okay We talked about dependent and independent variables. It's the change of the dependent variable over the change in the independent variable. So if we take, for example, some solution that was um, heated and it's been removed from the heat source. I need to fix my typo real quick because it's going to drive me crazy. Okay. So it's been re removed from the heat source, and now we're going to find the rate of change at which it cools down. Like how fast does this solution cool down? So we have time and we have temperature in Celsius. So time is independent, right? Time is going to happen no matter what. So this is my independent. And then temperature then is going to be dependent because how cool it has gotten depends on how long it has been. So these are going to be my x's, so I can call this x1, x2, x3, etc. And these will be y's, y1, y2, y3, etc. So the rate of change, I'm going to take y2 minus y1 and put that over x2 minus x1. So it's going to give me negative 4.2 over 2, which is negative 2.1 degrees per minute. So what that means is going to, um, the temperature will decrease to do 2.1 degrees per minute. An increasing rate of change would be something like this, where we are filling a swimming pool. So back down here somewhere, zero, de zero minutes, zero gallons, right? We stick the hose in and we start. And over time, the pool is being filled. After three minutes, there's 108 gallons. At seven minutes, there's 252 gallons. We want to find out how many gallons is this hose putting out per minute. So we make this x1, y1, and then x2, y2. So I do y2 minus y1 <coughs> over x2 minus x1. So I get 144 divided by 4, which is 36, and it's going to increase. 36 gallons per minute. Now, just so you know, it does not matter which of these you label as X1, Y1, and X2, Y2. If I had changed it and I made this X1, Y1, and this one X2, Y2, I would have gotten negative 144 over negative 4, which is still 36. So it, you don't have to worry that you're labeling, you know, which one is 1 and which one is 2. Like either one of them can be 1 and either one of them can be 2. The only thing you have to worry about is you can't say this is x1 and this is y2. They both have to be ones in the same ordered pair, and they both have to be twos in the same ordered pair. But which pair is which doesn't matter. We have is an unconstant you know, or inconsistent rate of change. Here we have CD sales, and here we have download sales of music. And so CD sales are going up, they're going down, they're going up, they're going down, they're going down more. But it's at a different rate because, well, it's a human element. 
and human behavior is often unpredictable. Same here with downloads. At first, you know, downloads aren't that exciting, then they go down for a little while, and then suddenly the new iPod Nano comes out and everybody's downloading music, right? Something like that. You know what it is? They probably invented that watch thing that you can put your Nano in and then everybody wanted one. Okay, so when this happens, when you have an inconsistent rate of change, you want to treat your graph or you want to treat your data as if it was a straight line. So, all right, and so to do that, If I were, I'm going to treat it like this. And if you're here, I'm going to treat it like that. So to, to create a data point to be a straight line, we're going to use the first and last point. And this will give us our average rate of change over all of that time. So for the CDs, um, we've got our first data point is 89.2. So I'm going to call that Y1. And this is Y2. And our years, this is 2001. That's X1. And this will be X2. Um, these are the years. And the reason I have to make the years as my x is because time is independent. Time will just continue to pass no matter what we do. So for CDs, I've got y1, y2. So I'm going to do 85.6 minus 89.2 over 2006 minus 2001. So I get negative 3.6 divided by 5, which gives me negative 0.72%, and that's per year. Okay, so CD sales went down an average of 0.72% per year. If I do downloads, I have a different Y1 and Y2, but the same X1, X2, same number of years. So I'm going to do 6.7 percent, oh, I don't need the percent, sorry, minus 0 0.2 over 2006 minus 2001. So I end up with 6.5 divided by 5, which is 1.3%. So our download sales increased an average of 1.3%. Now, if you're in marketing or music production, this would be important to you. Are you going to put all your money into producing CDs, or are you going to put your money into producing downloadable content? Thank you. I'd say you'd want to invest more in downloadable content because that is the purchases of downloads are increasing. Now, there's still a decent amount of people buying CDs, but it's going down. So over time, it's going to get less. Yeah? What is that last episode? Sales increased an average of 1.3% per year, per year. Slope is a ratio of change in the y-coordinate to the x-coordinate. Slope is symbolized with the letter M because slope is a magnitude of a line. That's where the M comes from in case you want to know. Um, it's the change in y 
over the change in x, which is delta, which is change in. And so that's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And it can also be referred to as rise over run. So rise being how far up or down you go, and run being how far sideways you go. All right, to find the slope of a line that passes through two points, first we label the points. You'll notice that slope is very familiar to something we were just doing on the last page. Slope and rate of change are the same thing. I'm going to do 5 minus 3 over 2 minus negative 4. If you're minusing a negative, don't forget to do that because it becomes a positive. So that's 2. Remember, minus a negative is positive. So I get 2 over 6, which is 1 third. So with this slope here, you would go, our rise over run, you'd go up one and then over three. That's what this tells us. So from every point on the line to get to another point on the line is, is up one over three. Okay, so again, you just label your points. And then you use your formula. Plug in the numbers, so y5 minus negative 3 over 3 minus 1. He's positive, so that's 8 over 2, so that's 4. Which means I'd go up 4 and then over 1. So x1, y1, x2, y2. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. If I say it enough times, it'll get stuck in your head. So I have negative 9 minus 11 over 24 minus negative 8. So that's negative 20 over 32 and then I'm going to reduce it. These both divide by 4. So I get negative 5 eighths which means I'm going to go down 5 and then over 8. And by over I mean to the right. or there's the easy way. You still have to find a, two points on the line. So we find two perfect points on the line. Okay, and now a perfect point is gonna go perfectly through um, like the corners. So on this graph, here's one and here's one. Then we start on the left most point, and then we count how many spaces up or down we have to go. If we went up, we're going to have a positive slope. If we went down, it's going to be negative. And that's our numerator. And then we count how many places to the right. And that's our denominator. So this is the numerator, and this is the denominator. Okay, so I'm going to count, and I'm going to go up one, two, three, four, five. It's five. 
so that's my numerator. And it's positive because I went up. And then I'm going to count 1, 2, 3. So that's my denominator. So my slope is 5. That 3 doesn't show up. Very well. Five thirds. So I went up five and then I went right three. Spaces. So here's a perfect point. They're the ones that pass exactly. So perfect points, like if you have your graph paper, right? They pass perfectly through the corners of the graph. Like so they're hitting that spot perfectly. So here and here. Now this time I'm going down, so I go one, two, three, four, five, six. So I went down six, so that's going to be a negative six. And then I go over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm negative six sevenths. So if I find another one, just you know, look across. Here's one, and here's one. I go up two. I go right three. So up two, over three. I'm going to go down 2 and over 5. So I went down, so it's negative. Okay, to write a linear equation, first format we would use is called slope-intercept form. Y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. And as you remember, that's where it hits the y-axis. OK. To find the equation <coughs> um, in slope-intercept form for a line where they've given you a graph, the step one is to find the y-intercept. That's b. So we're going to come on our graph and we're going to go down the y-axis and I'm going to go, oh, there it is. So in this particular case, b equals negative 2. After we've found the y-intercept, we find another point on the line. Here's one. And then we count to get from one point to the other to find our slope. So I go down 1 and then over 3. So in this case, my slope is negative one-third. I'm at four. Thank you for correcting. OK, then we plug in M and B. Maybe you also skip number three. That's because subconsciously, I knew it was meant to be four. See how that works? So m was 1 fourth, and b is negative 2. So I have y equals m, x, and plus b. So you can either write that as minus 2 or plus negative 2. If I don't have a grasp, but they give me points, right? They give me m, 
and they gave me x, and they gave me y, I don't know b. So I'm going to solve for, oh wait, I do know b. Sorry. It's y-intercept, isn't it? If x is 0 and y is 4, then b is 4. So I'm going to plug those in. Because they gave, because this intercept has been given, right? Any y-intercept is always of the form zero and then some number. So if the point that's been given to us is zero and then a number, that is the y-intercept. No, just to write the equation. Now, if we're given two points, this is the y-intercept, right? So we know this is going to be b but we don't know our slope. So we have to find the slope using the slope formula. So we have y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So that's 10 minus negative 6 over negative 4 minus 0. So I have 16 over negative 4, which is going to give me negative 4. Mm. I already have my intercept. It's given to me here, so I'm going to plug those in. So here's my equation. Hmm? So, so if we are not given the intercept, what we've been given is m, x, and y. We don't know b. So the first thing we need to do is we're going to plug in y, m, and x into our formula. And we're going to use that, and we're going to solve for b. And then we'll plug in M and B. No, because this is not a zero. B is only, the, the Y coordinate is only B if the X is zero. So here we had zero, and here we had zero. Okay. So what we do is we have our formula Y equals MX plus B. Y is seven. So I'm going to plug in the 7. M is 2. X is negative 5. And then plus B. Not 10, sorry. Negative 10 plus B. So I'm going to add 10 to both sides. And you get B is 17. Okay, so now we found B, and we plug that into the equation with the M. So our equation of the line is going to be 2x, where 2 is the slope, plus 17. If you're given two points, and you don't have the slope or the y-intercept, you have to solve for M first. So I'm going to take my points. And I'm going to plug them into the slope formula. So I'm going to get 10 minus negative 1 over 5 minus 2. And that's going to give me 11 thirds. And I'm going to pick either one of these points. In all honesty, it will not matter. You'll get the same answer because there are two points on the same line, so that line is going to have the same equation no matter what. Usually, if you have a fractional slope, I say, okay, look at x and see which x will divide by this de denominator and pick that one. In this case, though, neither do. 
so it won't matter. So I'm going to plug these into y equals mx plus b. And I'm just going to pick this point because they're both positive. They really don't have a better reason. So I'm going to do 10 is equal to 11 thirds times 5 plus b. Let's see, now maybe I should have picked the other one. Oh, well, anyway. 10 is equal to 55 thirds plus b. Okay, well, I need all thirds now. So I'm going to turn this 10 into something thirds. So I'm going to pick another color real quick. And I'm just going to write it here. Oh, no. That was not a good color. To turn a 10 into thirds, I multiply it by 3, and so that's my new numerator, 30 thirds. Okay. So what I have is 30 thirds is equal to 55 thirds plus B. And I'm going to subtract 55 thirds from both sides. And I'm going to B is negative 25 thirds. Sorry, it's so cramped. And then I'm going to plug those in. Familiar. Okay, so in this form version of the equation, y and x are just that. No, this is not standard form. Y1 and X1 are the coordinates of a point. Uh, standard form is AX plus BY equals C. Yeah. So Y and X, these, this, this Y here and this X here, stay just Y and X. They never, you don't, they're just always y and x. You don't substitute numbers in for those. They're just y and x. It's the y1 and the x1 that get numbers plugged in for them. Okay? So that's, that part's really important. So if you're going to use the point slope form of the equation, what we do is this is going to be x1, y1, and this is m. And so I plug those in. Y minus Y1 is equal to M times X minus X1. So I do Y minus negative 2 is equal to negative 4 times X minus 6. So Y1, M, X1. So I get Y plus 2 is equal to negative 4X plus 24, because I distribute that 4. Then I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. And I'm going to get y equals negative 4x plus 22. you. Okay. So if you're given a point and a slope, you plug those in and then you solve it to be y equals mx plus b. We'll do another one. So I have 
y minus 3 is equal to 1 half of x minus 2. y minus 3 is 1 half x minus 1. Distribute that half. So then I'm going to add 3 to both sides. That's a y, not a 2, by the way. And I get y is equal to 1 half x plus 2. We're given two points. We have to find the slope first, always. No matter whether you're using point slope form or slope intercept form, if you just have two points, you have to find the slope. So, so if I make this x1, y1, x2, y2, the negative 3 minus 7 over 3 minus negative 2, and I'm going to get negative 10 over 5, which will give me negative 2. Then I can pick either point. Now, on this one, I'm going to show you both choices to show, because it's going to look very different at the beginning, and you might not believe me that it's going to give you the same final answer. So um, if I pick negative 2, 7, I'm going to get y minus 7 is equal to negative 2 times negative 2, whoops. what I meant to do, times x minus negative 2. So I get y minus 7 is equal to negative 2 times x plus 2. So that's y minus 7 is equal to negative 2x minus 4, because I distributed that negative 2. Then I add 7 to both sides. And I get y equals negative 2x plus 3. If I use the point 3, negative 3, I get y minus negative 3 is equal to negative 2 times x minus 3. Looks completely different, right? So I get y plus 3 is equal to... negative 2x plus 6, and then I subtract 3 from both sides, and I get y equals negative 2x plus 3. So it really does not matter which point you pick. So you don't have to worry, like, if I pick the wrong point, I'm going to be wrong, because they're both on the same line. Parallel lines. So we'll just do parallel. It's symbolized by two parallel lines. Are non-vertical lines with the same slope. Okay. So we have parallel lines right here. And if line 1 was y equals 2x plus 5, line 2 might be y equals 2x minus 1. But the m's are the same. So in parallel, m's are the same. Actually, I shouldn't write it with equal. And so M is parallel to M. Okay. Perpendicular lines, I'm just spelling perpendicular wrong. It's symbolized with two perpendicular lines and upside down T. And these intersect at a 90 degree angle And the slopes are opposite reciprocals. Okay. So if I have a line, ah, can't do it. Okay. 
like that. The perpendicular line is going to be like that, not like that. that. So if, for example, this one is one, two, three. That's this line. That would be that line. <coughs> but the important thing is, is see how these are reciprocals? We have 7 sixths and 6 sevenths. And they're also opposite. So M is perpendicular to negative 1 over M. So one will be positive, one will be negative, and then they'll be reciprocals of each other. So maybe this line is y equals one-third x plus four. Maybe this line is y equals negative two-thirds x plus two or something. Who knows? But the point is, the slopes have no relationship. Okay, so parallel are the same, identical slopes, perpendicular are opposites and reciprocals. Everything else is nothing. I forgot to write perpendicular. The equation of a parallel or perpendicular line. Okay, so we're going to write that passes through this point, so this is going to be my x1, y1, or x, y, whichever, and is perpendicular to y equals negative 3 halves x plus 7. So if this is m, perpendicular m, perpendicular slope is going to be positive 2 thirds. So this is the one I want to use. So I'm going to plug that into, um, you can choose if you want to use point slope or slope intercept. I like slope intercept, but that's just me. And I'm going to do 2 thirds times 5 plus B. Actually, you know what? Maybe if we use point slope, we won't have to deal with fractions. Because I'm thinking I can make it so that you guys don't have to deal with fractions too much on this one. That's awesome. I might be wrong. That's it. <laughs> so I have y minus negative 6 is equal to 2 thirds times x minus 5. Nope, you're still going to have to deal with fractions. Sorry. But less of them. Okay, 6 is the same thing as 18 thirds. So I'm going to add 18 thirds to both sides. Or subtract, sorry, subtract 18 thirds from both sides. And so I'm going to get y is equal to 2 thirds x minus 28 thirds. Okay. Um, if I pass through this point and I'm parallel, this is my M. Well, if you remember, parallel is the same, so it's also going to be 4. So I have negative 1 is equal to 4 times 3 plus B. So negative 1 is equal to 12 plus B. Subtract 12 from both sides. 
and negative 13 equals b, so my formula is y equals 4x minus 13. Not formula, equation.